Hi everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday. It's been a crazy week here getting all the art and orders out uh, to everyone that joined us for Terry Moore Live last weekend. That was good. It was fun. All the art was shipped via FedEx Express in the US and internationally it went USPS Priority Mail Express. So everybody should have their art in the next few days for sure. And thank you so much to everyone who joined us and purchased art and books. Thank you. Uh, we had a great time and we hope you did too. It was so great to see people's names pop up and interact with them, even if it was just online. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the next Terry Moore Live will be April 8th through 10th. So start planning now. Hotel rooms and flights are going fast. You mean this coming April? <laughs> the one that's just around the corner? <laughs> but seriously, thank you all so much. It really means everything to us. So... We appreciate your support and your continued loyalty. You know, the good thing about the uh, online event weekend is that you don't have to book hotels and trips and planes. I just said attend. hotels and flights were going quite quick. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> I thought so, somebody should point it out. <laughs> so Terry is working feverishly on serial, uh, serial 8, and that will go to the printer in about 10 days. So you're getting close to wrapping this one up, babe. I know. Um, eight, nine, ten. That's it. Yeah. So. Hmm. Hmm. How's that going over there? It's going pretty good. Uh, it, it's a shift of gears to go from make a bunch of sketches, focus on that, and then, oh, go back to the series story. So you have to go back down the rabbit hole. Yeah. But I'm there. Yeah, the final issue in January. Yeah. Final issue in January, uh, and eight, nine, and ten is when all the all the traps spring. So I have a lot of storytelling on my mind. So it's fun. This what is else fun is fun. on your mind? Life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is fun. Our friends at Graffiti Designs found some sick shirts. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. They came in last week, and we're so busy getting out orders that I haven't even opened the boxes. Um, they're random images from when Terry was doing the series and they're random sizes, but we bought them and we'll have them up on the website later, later in the week. Um, I know that we have some of the very first shirt, the black one with the eyes. Uh, and I think the only size we have is extra large. That's all we had was extra large, but it's the original. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and I know there are some sip kids. There, are, I think there are a couple of I Dream of Yous. Um, I know there's the cast T-shirt, that navy one that had all that. the cast on it. Anyway, there are several different ones. We have about a hundred shirts. So um, when we get it up, everybody take a look. Uh, graffiti gave us a great deal on it, so we're going to price them at about ten dollars a piece. Gosh, so that's so these a great are deal. Vintage T-shirts. Graffiti design t-shirts. Vintage graffiti design t-shirts, yeah. which are the high quality ones. Yeah. And um, God, for $10, that's cool, cool. I know. To get that first one. I may have to take some. Yeah, I use them for wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> I wear my shirts. Yeah, they're meant to be worn. I, wait, I make my own clothing order. <laughs> so that's all I have. I've been busy boxing orders. Yes, you have. Do and you have anything to add to this, Mr. Moore? Well, I was helping you and then drawing this, and um, that was it. That's my life. Help you draw a book. Help you draw uh, books. Well, I, let's move on. Let's get some more <laughs> life. What do you say? Oh, that sounds good to me. Sounds okay, good. well, then let's get on the hot seat. Sounds good. Okay, this first question, I don't think we've touched on it, but everybody's talked about it. Have you ever considered writing a novel? I've heard rumors that you considered a sip novel, but I couldn't find anything in print. <laughs> oh, touche. Um, yeah, I did. One of the reasons why I had big prose sections in Strangers in Paradise was to work on it and get people used to my prose. So that if I said, I'm gonna write a book, nobody laughed. <laughs> and, but I got so busy making another series, another series, another series. I'm not organized enough to like work on the novel at night. No, was, you're not. I was always just trying to catch up on my deadline at night. So, yes, I still want to do that. You do? Yeah, and I, and I know I can. So that drives me crazy. So, But, you know, the, the temptation of the novel is that you can tell a deeper story and you don't have to draw what you write. The drawing takes forever. 
as I've said. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing that. Well, the thing about the drawing though is that your art in particular really tells a story of its own. So don't you think your readers might miss that? I do. Uh, so the story better be good. But uh, Have I Have you ever thought about doing a hybrid? Yes. Uh, I was thinking about it yesterday, as a matter of fact. Honestly, I was thinking about how many illustrations would I put in a book? And would the book, book be taken seriously if it had illustrations in it? Would it be a different category or type of book? If You know, they used to do that a lot back in the old days. Um, there would be spot illustrations from illustrators. I was thinking about doing that. Um, because I have a panel here that is very expressive and it would have been perfect for a page illustration in the book. So I was thinking, you know, six to nine illustrations in a novel would... Like a 200 page novel? Yeah, two to 300 pages at the most. 200 is kind of short for a novel, but um, 300 is just typical. Average, yeah. yeah. Um, but do you want to be average? No, I don't. That's why the illustrations might be in there and make it a little different. It's strange to see a book with illustrations that isn't YA or fantasy, right? So I don't know if the, you know, a different audience is ready for that. We'll see. Well, that's something to think about after you're finished with cereal. Have you guys ever seen a novel with illustrations that wasn't YA or fantasy uh, or sci-fi? <laughs> what does that leave? Fiction. <laughs> oh, <laughs> historic fiction. Medical. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Okay. I can see your mind spinning. <laughs> uh, the second question is, what do you do to get through a period, and I think you've touched on this before, but what do you do to get through a period when you feel uninspired? Do you take a break or power through, and how do you draw that amazing hair? <laughs> Um, I draw the amazing hair with patience and you just try to think of uh, how would the earth do it you know like you know the rolling waves and all the other stuff in, on, in nature that just kind of rolls and I think hair is part of nature it just has its own kind of lines and things to it you have to think about clouds and waves and stuff like that you don't think about hair um, when I'm uninspired I usually find that I'm blocked. Like I've been trying to draw the same thing for an hour and a half and I'm getting frustrated, it's not working. So I step away and you can just go have lunch, something as short as lunch. You come back and look at it fresh and then you'll see the problem. And the way I come back into the inspiration is to go slowly and just work on the details. So um, like I, I have a drawing right here where the head is too big for the body and i'm i'm not mad because at least Don't show that page. Yeah, yeah. i'm not mad because i know i have the face i need and it's okay to redraw the body so i'm going to redraw the body slowly and carefully and be patient with myself and know that i will figure it out you just have to have confidence and know that you will figure it out so just be patient with yourself let your hand get back in there i think sometimes we just kind of like um get so busy on one little section, you work it to death and you finish it and then it really didn't work with all this other stuff anyway. You lost the sight of the big picture. So it's a matter of make sure you have the big picture loosely framed correctly and then go in patiently with your details. That's how I do it. That's well, it's amazing how sometimes you really are stuck and you will just tear that paper up trying to get it right. and then you step away and come back maybe the next morning and Fix it, like that. it takes you 10 minutes. Um, nobody has ever erased a, a spot on a page more than me, I, I think. <laughs> I mean, I go through erasers way faster than pencils. Um, and one of the reasons is because every nuance, especially on the face, every nuance is totally different, says something different. And I'm looking for one particular thing. So. You know, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it, that, you know. So I just go after it forever, and it just requires patience. If you're not, if you're impatient and in a bad mood, that's not going to go well. <laughs> that's part of what the music is for, and whatever works for you, you know, whatever makes you stay in the chair and be in your happy place with your, and just be grateful to have a, be able to draw. 
Yeah, because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to bring it up. <laughs> you can draw. You've added to many pages. Well, no, but I, I can say, Terry, that head's too big or, you know, that yeah. those eyes are wrong or... And I listen because if Robin sees it, you'll see it. You know, I can kid myself and go, oh, I, I like these weird white eyes. And Robin will say, that's just weird. And I know that she speaks for a lot of people. So you listen, you know, and you go back in there and you rearrange it. And then the next day she goes, that looks much better. And that's what you want. Okay, well, I hope that answers his question. Uh, so what are you drawing today? Well, today um, I have penciled loosely um, what I need. And what it, when I pencil a page, it's not the kind of penciling that you would want to hand over to an inker. Because you know where it's going. I know where it's going, but if I handed this to an inker, he'd kill me. She would kill me. Um, they would kill me. Uh, so um, I'm going to show you how I ink one of my drawings from here and how much it's not tracing. Inking is not tracing. Inking is uh, expanding and finishing out on a very simple pencil base for me. So you, there's a big difference between looking at people that in mainstream art, they have these very tight pencil pages. Even the shadows are all indicated. Um, I don't have that. So I'm going to show you how I do it. That's because you don't have somebody else inking it. They don't have to guess at what I'm doing. I, I indicate, I know what it means. So it's my shortcuts. So I'll show you how I do that. And I think a lot of people want to ink their own drawings. So that it's good to know how far do you have to pencil. You don't have to pencil completely rendered as if you're going to hand it over to a stranger to finish. So we can talk about that. Okay. Well, I hope you have, guys have a great week and I'll see you right here next week. Okay. Meet me here. The uh, brush is what I will use for the bigger main lines um, and it's ready to go. But for the details inside the face, um, you can tell that the brush would make bigger, wider marks. And I'm actually looking for a little more detail. I, we could actually get in there and do it with a brush, uh, but it's a challenge. Um, I've taken to where I will use a Micron um, 005 for something that, that is that small. And I want the details of, say, the glasses instead of just a black mark. I want to see both, both edges of the lens. So, let's get in there. I put that little kick in there because I noticed that on glasses. Now, you'll, if you look closely, I'm not even going to draw the eye. I could draw the bag underneath the eye. Like that, just to indicate it. Okay, that is about as much detail as I want on that. Now, if I go in and do the hair with the O5, uh, it's going to be those same uniform lines. And I can lift off on it at the end and get that little fade. And now I'm just looking for textures and a way to break it up. As you can see, none of this was in the pencil, but the pencil was my guide. It's kind of like, okay, here is a football field, run around on it and form your pattern. There's the gullet of the neck. And that's, I may stop right there. Now, one thing I would do is add some darkness back in here. 
Okay, now I don't want to use a, a, a single uniform line for the rest of it. Uh, let's try to get in there with the, the brush and see what we can do. If you look at it, compare the pinpoint I just used, the, uh, the 0 0.05, with the tip of this brush. See how the brush is actually even... My hands are shaking. <laughs> See how the brush is just like the, no, see how they compare? So don't be afraid of it. If you get in there with a steady hand, you can do this. <laughs> uh, okay, so what I'm gonna try to do here is get her to lean on her arm. I have my face right on the camera. Shh. Sound like Darth Vader. Okay, these kind of lines right here, instead of just following a constant potato shape line, it really helps break things up. This kind of stuff is classic uh, illustrator move. I always uh, cite somebody like Bernie Wrightson, but come on, it's been going on forever. Whoever your favorite artist is, they did it. Neil Adams, Bernie, uh, Arthur Rackham. You don't know who Arthur Rackham is? Oh yeah, he, he drew Green Lantern back in the 1820s. Okay, see the different weights and lines that I'm using? That helps indicate where there is more heaviness. Uh, and usually it's underneath objects. Um, lighter line on top, heavier line on the bottom. And now I'm, I'm getting to where the brush point is just barely skating. To make that little fine line right there, you're really just barely skating on the top of the page. And there's the arm of the chair. Do I use a ruler for that? No. What am I, an architect? I just make that little curvy line like there and it actually kind of gives it a little organic uh, life. Because all the lines on her are um, not architectural. They're organic and round and loose, thin and thick. Um, a cartoonist can get away with doing the same thing with his objects. So here's the back of the chair. My hand is still shaking because it's morning. I don't usually uh, ink until the afternoons when my hand calms down. And then the grips. Like that. And then there's a a doohickey thing of a jiggy there. That's what I would have named it. You people call it the wheel. Shaky hand. It gets smoother. What I want to indicate here in this drawing is that she is at this angle. She's slumped. Um, maybe um, her right hip is sore today, you know, that kind of thing. Or maybe she just always slumps now. So sitting up straight is uh, a sign of uh, strength, and we don't want that. So it's slump time here. And just a dark line there to indicate that um, shadow. Got it? Okay, now let's work on a close-up. I think I have time to do this. Okay, same thing again.
Um, I'm not even gonna bother you showing you how to do it with a 102 hunt pin because I don't think anybody uses them anymore. Um, you can just do it with this. Um, so the reason why I'm using this is because I'm just going for these small details right here. The whole thing about here was to get her to look right at uh, Detective Sanchez, uh, who is roughly indicated here. But I wanted that focus of that eye to be on her eyes. And it's funny, the most important thing is where those pupils are. So I put them there first. Then this entire, the, everything about this face is going to be uh, measured off these pupils. That's how important they are. And then get these gray eyes that are cloudy, kind of milky. Careful with that line. If you move it too much, you change the expression. And one thing I can't do here that I would do if we were, say, on a paint system is that this inside rim down in here is red. You know, it's pink. Uh, not healthy eyes. And there's always, uh, in the older, this, this top eyelid is heavy, and it's heavy all the way down here to the side. Then you've got these old wrinkles and smile lines that come off of here. Um, if I start doing them too much with a pen, um, it's going to be too much. Um, but if you were on a paint system, you would paint those in there as just slightly darker colors. And then the untrimmed, unkept dark eyebrows. And again, uh, little black lines to indicate um, furrows in the brow that on a paint system would be uh, done with color. But, okay, I'm going to stop comparing to paint systems because this is all about black and white ink. Like that. And then allow for um, her glasses in there. I think I can do the rest with the brush. And you can uh, apologize for the shaky hand. I, I haven't had my first Dr. Pepper yet. So I did my point. Here we go. This used to be a pointy nose, uh, elegant when she was young, and it has grown. There's an in, uh, do a little uptick right there to indicate um, distaste, disdain. There's, there would be shadowing in there. Uh, I'm gonna leave it alone for a moment until I get more ink off this brush. When the brush is nearly dry, I can come back in here and get these really light feather lines. Right now, it'll still make these very pure lines. Okay, she has these old-fashioned glasses on. With the black top. You know, the kind you see in the 1950s grandmother uh, photos, black and white photos. Look at my handshake. You know what I need? Way more caffeine. This line is wrong. It's gonna go straight. So that's what the whiteout is for. Okay, now, depending on the prescription on the lenses, depending on the prescription of the lenses, whether or not this would be in line or way out of line here or here. Um, I'm not gonna mess with that. I'm just gonna lightly indicate it. 
Okay, uh, top lip has grown, and now it falls down over where teeth were. She's missing some teeth, wrinkles, and one side of the bottom lip has collapsed from the stroke. Tooth, tooth. Like that. You know, when it comes to drawing this uh, lady, these the shaky lines that I'm doing are actually kind of helping me. because it actually more closely resembles the crepe skin that you get as your skin dehydrates and you get older. There's the gullet of the neck. And there's actually a lot of little small, you know, um, pull lines in here that I'm not gonna mess with. Okay, now I almost, I almost am ready to do that little line there. You know, these lines go all the way back to here, right? And add the little wispies up here. Now draw the, this inside furrow. And if I leave that line too light, it loses its impact. So now you have to go back in and commit to it like that. Okay, the fun part. She still has hair, but it's unkept. And for some reason, I always start right there. Get my bearings. None of these lines are, I have that line. I have that. I know from my pencil that this is the basic outline of the head right there. And that the part is in the middle. And that's kind of all that pencil told me. Would have been nice to show me some more, but I didn't have time. I can just sink it later. I don't have to draw it off. The, why would I draw in such a haphazard manner with the pencils? Uh, because I'm on a deadline. If I was not on a deadline, I would draw I would draw rendered finished pencils and then carefully work out more detail. Um, but drawing a book on a deadline that's due every month is a different artistic challenge than that. I'll do some more lines on that. Okay. Look, see how the line just broke up on me? Okay, try it. That's what I could get on the nose right now. So let's go for it. See? I want those eyes to be gray. Uh, if, this, if this was a bigger um, illustration, you could go ahead and do gray with some sort of line work. Arthritic fingers. And the thing about these guys is the ten, the tendons and then uh, collapse veins. So there's not really any vein work going on on there. It's just about following the lines of the tendons. Um, 
and the rest of this is all about get some ink off there. Sometimes, okay, I just see I was inking fine, and then I decided I have too much ink, and I rolled it off like that, and now I can go back in here. and get those, you know, those shadow lines. This knuckle would be reddish in color. There's only so much I can do with the brush. Thicker line over here because it's the outside of the dressing gown. Okay, I'm going to leave it right there because now I would do Detective Sanchez and she comes in. Oh, hello, it's my old friend, the green pencil. She comes in about right here. She has very thick um, shoulder length hair, and then she's bending over, which means Detective Sanchez is actually she's she's coming in from that angle. See how she's bent over here. So I have to picture that, and the only thing, the only way I have of indicating all this is with this one shoulder line. So. The head is upright. She could have been in any kind of standing position. But if I put this shoulder right here, it's all you need as a visual cue to know the rest of it. Okay, um, I think I've run out of time, but we kind of did all of that with these two inking tools right here. And you can see that when I did my pencil, that's what I saw. When I did my pencil, that's what I saw. That's not what I drew, but that's what I saw. <laughs> All I needed was the perimeters uh, and the target areas. I knew where the eye was, the bottom of the nose, the mouth, and um, the tilt of the head. I had all this. This was all aligned properly, which I don't... You would hate to ink this and then find that one eye is wacko. Um, so that's what I'm trying to accomplish with the pencil. Here's another. Here's a good example. Uh, this is a pencil. This is all I need to know where the bottom of the nose is. The eyes are aligned. I know the eye expression, and I know that I'm going to do that. And I'm, I'm just going to put this face right here with that dead stare into space. She's actually lo looking out a window here. So you go from that to that, and I saved, what, 30 to 45 minutes penciling that tighter? Um, that adds up 30 to 45 if I save 30 minutes a panel um, gosh there's two four six six on this one page and I have I always draw like 18 pages so six times 18 it's times 18 is 345,000 so I save 345,000 divided by 60 I save about nine months of time on each issue um, so that's why I do it this way I hope this helped, and um, oh, when you're done inking, um, you put your, uh, use your thing, and I always rub it up against the side, like that, and it helps get all the, see how the, all the ink is gone? Wipe that off on, wipe that off on a paper towel. It's clean. I'm ready for the next page.